J Coverage Platinum Sports Picks. Atlanta Falcons minus two and a half is another one of my double stake plays. I'm going to start off by correcting something that I said in a previous podcast regarding the playing time. The Falcons wide receiver Julio Jones and Falcons running back Devontae Freeman had last year. Uh, Julio Jones started 16 games last season uh, and Devontae Freeman started 13 games last season. So I had had alluded to those guys missing a little bit of time last year. Freeman did, Julio Jones didn't. Uh, Julio Jones had a pretty serious injury the year before last and I think I got that a little bit mixed up with last year. However, as it stands and, you know, it is what it it is going to be this... Uh, Julio Jones is on this offense. Devontae Freeman is on this offense. Mohamed Sanu is on this offense. Um, and I think that those three guys are going to be really, really dangerous this weekend. In particular, Julio Jones, who is arguably the best wide receiver in football. But a healthy Devontae Freeman last year was really, really good early on uh, for the Atlanta Falcons. Their running game was was quite strong last year uh, early on in the season. Colin Coward alluded to, he said the fact, look... The Atlanta Falcons started 5-0 and last year, then they went 8-8 eight and eight overall, blah, 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 blah. I don't really know what point he was trying to make with that. The only thing that I extracted from that those couple of sentences was that the Falcons start well. And I can tell you that the Falcons do start well every single year. The Falcons have not lost a home opener since 1999, okay? Uh, Matt Ryan is 8-0 against the spread in home openers in his entire career, okay? Um, the, the Atlanta Falcons, I like their offense, man, okay? Not only do they have Julio Jones uh, playing out there, he's going to be fresh, he's going to be fit. Devontae Freeman's going to be fresh, he's going to be fit. Matt Ryan is a guy who starts seasons, or he always start season strong. He's a great quarterback. He's a great passing quarterback. Um, he does have interceptions in him, but he, all in all, he is a very, very good player. But this offensive line, you know, Jake Matthews, he's he's coming into his third year out of Texas A&M. He was a little bit, she's been a little bit shaky throughout his career, but you get the, you get the feeling at 26, 25, 26 years of age, he's going to really start to come into his own. Um, Andy Levitre is on this offensive line. Alex Mack, a big, big, big signing from Cleveland who's going to come over and just He's just a blue a blue chip center. He's a great blocker, running and passing. I really like what this guy's going to be doing for them um, on the offensive line. So I think that this Falcons offense is going to be really, really, really hard to deal with. And then on the defense, I think they've got enough improvements to kind of take the step from really, really bad to maybe only a little bit bad this season. So the Falcons defense, they have Brooks Reed, Jonathan Babineau, Grady Jarrett, Tyson Jackson, Vic Beasley, Delon, Delon Jones, Devontre Campbell, Robert Alford, Desmond Trufant, Ricardo, Ricardo Allen, and Kamal Ishmael. And I think that they have, yeah, they have Courtney Upshaw, I can see here in defensive tackle out of Alabama, who came over from uh, the Baltimore Ravens, who was a little bit of a bust. But hopefully he can get in there, get, get himself some playing time. Also, they have Dwight Freeney here, who came over from Indianapolis, who is a 14-year veteran who's going to bring quite a bit to their team in regards to experience and also might bring a couple of sacks on the way as well. So I like, don't get me wrong, with the personnel that they have here, their best player on defense is probably Desmond Trufant, their young corner out of Washington. This game, there's no doubt about it, it's going to be high scoring. Either team is going to have problems matchup wise but I think that this Atlanta Falcons team how well they start year to year I think that they're going to have enough in this one to beat the Buccaneers now the Buccaneers offense for mine is very very good Vincent Jackson Mike Evans Jameis Winston Doug Martin okay um however I have a little bit of a like Jameis Winston I know Colin Colin Coward was saying that he's starting to take care of his body he had a very exceptional rookie year last year absolutely all those things are true however I have this little lingering doubt about second year quarterbacks coming in and maybe not being as good as they were the year before the second year syndrome thing is very much alive and real um, and and it's a thing man now let's talk about this Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense really quickly because I am sold on the Buccaneers offense I think the Falcons are going to have a hard time defensively dealing with their their offense I think that um, Doug Martin's a quality running back I don't think Doug Martin's as good as Devontae Freeman, though. I don't think his yards will be as impressive as Freeman's this year. But certainly Vincent Jackson and Mike Evans are going to pose some matchup problems for the Falcons defensively. There's no doubt about it. But when you're talking about the ultimate matchup problem, it's Julio Jones on anybody. Now, Alteron Verner and Brent Grimes are the corners for these Tampa Bay Buccaneers team, and Vernon Hargraves was the first first round pick for them. So they did come out, they did bolster their biggest weakness in the offseason, which I really, really do like. I like the fact that they did that. But I, I still. I think that this Falcons team, 
given the way they, they've started over the years, given the numbers that Julio Jones put up last year, given the home field advantage, the divisional matchup NFC South, I think the Atlanta Falcons are going to have enough to beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this weekend. Uh, Brent Grimes is a great player. He's spent a bit of time in Miami. Uh, it's his 10th year pro. He's a really, really quality guy, really, really quality player, but I don't think that anybody's going to be able to cover Julio Jones. I think they're going to need to put a lot of attention on Julio Jones, and when they do that, they're going to open up a little bit of opportunity for Mohamed Sanu, who is a really talented guy. He's a big body. He's got a big, big set of mitts on him and can bring down the jump ball. Um, I like the Atlanta Falcons in this game. Now, another reason I like the Atlanta Falcons, and obviously I'm going to go back to saying this in just about every podcast I do, that public money, that public money. Now, this is a little bit confusing, okay? You go to covers.com and you see Atlanta Falcons, apparently minus 2.5 has 61% of the action. If 2.5 has 61% of the action, then how come the line's gone from 3 into 2.5? Could be a little bit of sharp money on the Atlanta Falcons, but, you know, you know, as it stands, the money is still, 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 riding with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, there is a difference between public money and sharp money. And I think I think that there may be a little bit of sharp money um, on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And what sharp money means is, that is, is intelligent money, is these guys like me, who are, you know, not like me, they're guys who are putting more, a lot more money than me, guys who are going to the bookie and putting 10 grand on the Buccaneers. You know what I mean? Guys who do this for a living, guys who have got 30 or 40 clients betting on it. You know, these under-the-radar dudes who are coming in and who bookies are really, really respecting might be coming to the window and betting on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in this one. But the Sharps aren't always right, okay? And even though Covers.com has the Buccaneer, has the Falcons as a 61% popular pick, scoresandodds.com is another website that I use. Apparently, 80% of the money is running for Tampa Bay here. So I think that if you were to look at all of the money that's come in on this game, I think it would be a pretty, pretty even 50-50 split. The Buccaneers, I know a lot of people like the Buccaneers. If I ask my friends, who do you like in the Buccaneers-Falcons game, they say the Buccaneers. I hear Buccaneers. Buccaneers are a good pick, two and a half. Colin Coward, I can get the Buccaneers plus three. Yeah, you can. I love going against things like that. I know the Falcons are a bit of a dusty team. They, they, they lack... Uh, they lack toughness. They're not outstanding in the trenches. But I think with the guys they've got, Alex Mack, they've got Matthews on the offensive line, who I think is going to start to come into his own. Their offense is still good, man. Devontae Freeman, Mohamed Sanu, Julio Jones. This um, Tampa Bay Buccaneers team is going to be pretty hard to deal with because they did improve their secondary. They've got Grimes and Werner on defense. But there's just this little feeling I have about the Falcons being so good in home openers. They haven't lost since 1999. Matty Ryan... 8 and 0 against the spread in home openers. Like, I don't love trends, but trends like that, really strong trends. Like trends like oh yeah, the Houston Astros are 10 and 2 in their last, you know, 12 games on a Monday. I don't pay I don't really like shit like that. But I really really like a trend like this that tells me that hey, Matt Ryan is switched on to start the year in home openers. 8 and 0 against the spread in his last 8 home openers and the Falcons have never ever lost a home opener in 17 years, okay? I, I really like the Falcons in this one. I think they, they're going to be able to They're going to be able to do the job, man. I just think the Atlanta Falcons, bro. Keep an eye out for Jameis Winston. What's he going to be able to do in this second year? Is he going to have a case of second year syndrome? I'm not too sure. Um, and the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I do think that they're probably going to be a bit of a, a force to be reckoned with this season, but not right now. I think the Falcons come out. I think they get them. The line was three. I can now get two and a half because this line has been driven a little bit in my favor. Uh, you know, bookies win more than the public do. Bookies win more money than what the betters do. And right now I'm sensing that there's more money on Tampa Bay. There's less money on Atlanta. And I think all of this money is going to end up in the bookies' hands. And we can sneak in and get the Falcons at minus two and a half and probably, you know, take some of that money for ourselves. I like the Falcons in this game, man. I think they cover two and a half. Two and a half, I think they keep that awesome home opener record going. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they play a brave match. They go home, they fix up a few things, and they have a pretty solid year. Uh, and maybe the Falcons even decline a little bit after the first couple of weeks like they always do. But as long as Jones is on that offense, as long as Freeman's on that offense, as long as that offensive line has a couple of big boys who are going to improve them, as long as Sanu is out there, and as long as Matt Ryan's throwing balls, give me the Falcons at home, man. I really like them to start the year.